Welcome everybody to our live stream here on Lee Chess, Lee Chess and Twitch. Making some moves in my, I'm making some moves in my correspondence chess games. I guess it's the only one where it's my turn. All right. What's up, Master B? Good morning, Monday morning. Monday morning. We've got London System and Stafford Gambit. What is the Stafford Gambit again? I just put these trolley, trolling title to amass mindless followers. A mass of mindless followers. All right. Hello, mindless followers. Prepare to be brainwashed. So, I've got a challenge here. Mondays are, of course, Blitz. Because I've been doing this for a while. You should know what I do. We don't do mindless master classes on the London system and random unsound gambits. It's just a joke. It's a joke. Troll stream title Monday. So, Repun Bansal is challenging me to 5 plus 3. Casual Blitz. Twitch. Panda looks really, he looks closer today. He's in the dark. He's got a, a sort of better lighting. You can turn on his light, but I don't know if it will even, it will even work. There we go. Lighting up, we need Christmas lights for Panda. Holiday cheer, everybody. What's up? J-O-O-I-4, Juicebox Wizard. What time is it there? Do you think championship is over? I don't think it ever started. It's like... I was like this much more interested in this than... the Magus versus Anand matches. But now it was over when it started, man. For me it ended like after game three. I lost all interest in it when they started playing the... anti Marshall and Petrov. It's a snooze fest. And typical Magnus, you know, snooze fest. Magnus wins drawn positions because of time. Actually, yesterday was the best game. I mean, like, Magnus, yeah, he should have ended the match. Um, effectively. But I never found it interesting. Except for maybe game two. You know, the Catalan was a good game. Other than that, I'm not, you know... Magnus the greatest technical player of all time. There's no question. Um, technical player. He doesn't have the greatness of Kasparov, like conceptually, um, or Bobby Fischer, but but he is the greatest, like technically, ever. Um, Napomniachi has no chance. Never did, in fact. Um, all right, Ripun Bansal. We're playing 5 plus 3, so I'm not interested. I doubt I'll be tuning in. I mean, maybe I'll just check the openings of the last games. I just hope it's over. So we don't have to see rapid chess for the World Championship. I really, you know, really don't want to see that. No, Ripun, it wasn't cancelled, you just missed it. We're still on Friday. You have to tune into the previous stream to know what's going to happen. I can't believe I still have to answer this. We're not. I'm just going to ignore him. All right. Stafford Gambit. No, I'm never allowed to cancel a stream or something like that. I can never do that. That's not allowed. Can't have a life outside of streaming. What happened? I had to take someone to the... I had to take someone to the hospital. Nothing important.
Just don't call me sir. Greatest tournament player ever. I don't know. I mean, I don't know who expected Napomniachi to have a serious chance. I mean, he's never played a match of this magnitude. But the, the problem is the whole thing about candidates tournament. When you have a tournament to decide who qualifies to the world championship, see, that's not a really reliable way of, of determining the challenger for the world championship. Every time you hold a tournament, like there's gonna be like a different winner almost every time you know you don't really it's just too too much variance in determining who wins a single tournament like that have a series of tournaments like 10 tournaments to determine the challenger for the world championship you're gonna have one tournament determine the challenger for the world championship well you're gonna get a random winner every time you know if you add like 10 tournaments to determine the challenger for the world championship you'd have a much more accurate indication right of even if you did it by rating it would be a better way to determine the the challenger for the world championship no um well there is a chance daran rudin for i guess if if carlson like intentionally like didn't win because of betting corruption or something but I don't think if Magnus tries that that Napomniachi, well, he probably has like a 1% chance. I shouldn't say it's impossible. I think there's a 1% chance that Napomniachi could, could literally. So Ripon subtly knows the theory of the white side of the Fianchetto variation. Oh, the Skaven Ingen. Wow. I had this once against uh, this guy Stupovsky from Serbia. Don't believe we've ever had this variation. The Pomniachi has a 1% chance of, of tying the match and going to rapid tie breaks, when he'll probably lose anyway. But the match is, is really not interesting. Totally. Maybe the biggest snooze fest of all time. Definitely the Caruana match was better, in my opinion. The games were much more interesting with Caruana. Even Karyakin was more interesting, I think. I don't know if Dupamiachi could choose more boring openings or what, you know. Who the heck is his, like, who's advising him? Hey, you should play the Petrov and the anti Marshall. Not like something like Sharp, like the Scotch and the, the Sicilian. So everyone agrees that like Dupamiachi is this tactical player and his chance is to beat Magnus with tactics. So let's play the Petrov and the anti marshal with White. Okay. Who is his, like, opening coach or something? Could you pick, like, a worse... A worse assortment of boring openings against the greatest tactical player in the world? Admittedly, like, Caruana played the Petrov, but not, not against... Not against uh, Magnus. Did they have any Petros, actually? No, I can't remember. Maybe they did. Though I think it suits Caruana's style a little better. Um, no, I don't think it's a good idea. You need to play something sharper. Why would the guy not play the Sicilian or something? What are you thinking, even? I don't get it. You know, he thought he would, like, draw the match, playing boring chess, and then somehow pull it out in rapid. Like, what's what's the, the, the Pomniachi match strategy? Let's draw the classical match, and we'll pull it out in rapid. We'll switch the Sicilian in the rapid stage. Dude had to play... He had to play more dynamic in the opening. 
You're not going to beat Magnus Carlsen in a match with boring openings. You know, seriously. What are you thinking? Well, I mean, none of the computers... None of the computers thought Nepo was winning, right? But I mean, maybe better, yeah. It's winning is relative. What is, what does winning mean? By human terms, is a relative, relative thing. Not by computer, not by computer standards. It wouldn't have mattered even if Papniachi had won Game Six. He has like one percent chance at this point. He had like a 13% chance at the beginning. Now he has like a 1% chance. Probably. But honestly, I thought it was the most boring match ever. I mean, not as boring as Anand, because Anand had a 0% chance. So I like how, how Ripun Bansal is suddenly like Michael Adams. When did you become Michael Adams? I guess we're going to trade pieces here. But I like the way he's using his time, finally. He's getting a little better with using his time. We're about equalized. Why well, does be careful not to be overextended now? I don't think he should have exchanged on F6. Speaking of Michael Adams. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Things are getting pretty random around here. It's getting pretty random <laughs> this time of year. Hmm. Don't know about this move. Most likely that's a mistake. Oh, I didn't expect him to trade queens, though. So he wants to trade queens. Interesting. I was just kidding about trading queens. You're overextended slightly, so I'm not going to trade queens. Necessarily. Pawn takes pawn. Your pawns are extended. An extended stay. He has an, he's had an extended stay with us. Hmm. Danger.
I blundered. Blundiferous. Now it's subjectively a draw. Well, I guess I'd rather be black here with the four pawns. Four pawns attack. So this is the kind of position Magnus would, would excel in. Excel, PowerPoint. Oh, look at that move. Perfect defense. Look at that. Imagine that. Interesting. White was never winning, but I made a really ugly blunder. Dropping the exchange after getting a winning position. Then it was a draw. You know, if I make one mistake there, I was actually lost. It's very easy here. I think if I don't play g4 in this position, I'm in Zuxuang. Probably there's some passive way to defend, but I don't like it. I mean, other than g4, what does black play here? Seriously. Do I have literally one move in this position? No, the computer thinks I can hold. Weird. I thought if I let his rook over here, I'm like dropping a pawn. Oh, I see. I have a check. I didn't see this here. Check and then back to f6. So there's there's a couple different ways I can defend. Knight g7, which is really ugly. Knight g7, rook h6 looks horrible. Knight g7, knight c7, knight d8. How does that work? Knight d8, knight to d8. Wow. All right, I blew it. Who is chess fan? Signet. Sumaher. Who's Sumaher? All right, we are taking, we're supposed to be taking subscriber challenges. What happened to Viking Beer? Who is Viking Beer?
Ramiro's niece. Yeah, that's that's a weird name. Ramiro's nice. Sumahair is a subscriber. Viking Bear is a subscriber. I don't know about Signet. Remind me who Signet is again. So Mondays and Wednesdays, I I try to take the challenges from the players who are subscribed to the stream first. Fridays, I when I'm not canceling a stream due to an emergency, um, I I let everyone challenge equally. Signet is you. Oh, it's you. No, I don't remember. Besides having Alzheimer's, I also just have a bad memory to begin with. It's hard, man. I've been doing this for five years. It would be hard to remember everyone I play. I have a better memory for the subscribers, though. Hint, hint. Right, Juicebox Wizard? Alright, Sumahair with the Queen's Gambit. Oh no. Why casual? Why do you live in, in Hungary? Why casual? I don't know. So people don't cheat and, and steal my rating points with computers? I'm a subscriber. I was a subscriber. You're short of money. Me too. Oh man, we all are. It's those damn billionaires. You know, they took everything. Stupid Elon Musk. Just the 1% and the rest of us are just left to suffer. Basically, Sumer is letting me play E5 here, but how strong is my attack? Better act now. Act now. Sumer plays too fast. He's playing faster than... Sumer is actually starting to be worse than... I think he's worse than... Ripun Bansal. You know, it just occurred to me. I'm always giving Ripun a hard time. Sumer, you actually play faster than he does. You literally don't use any time on your moves. You've become worse. You didn't used to be this bad, but you've gotten worse. He must just play like 1-0 all the time. A long break from Twitch. Oh boy. <laughs> we have had a few people like that. Um, yeah, I remember something. There was always some some fan. There was someone who was a, ba a bad troll with a similar name. But you know that's pretty general. We had quite a problematic troll with a similar name. Pretty general name though, could be anybody. E5, ninety five, ninety four, C five. We have had a couple of games similar to this. I'm just spending way too much time on this. So knight sixty five is the safer move. Just have a space advantage. Don't give him any counterplay. He would like counterplay. Oh, wow, dude. You've been watching my stream for how long, Sumahair? You refuse to use time or... He refuses to use time. Why are you playing bullet? Like seriously, hyper bullet. He's playing Hyper Bullet. Where's his Hyper Bullet rating? But it has a huge advantage now. Like, E takes D is positionally losing. He just, like, played it instantly. Strategically losing. You're outside, it's cold. Uh... Lined up like penguins. But you know, luckily it's not that easy. Computer would slaughter you here. You're lucky I'm not a computer.
Yeah, I don't know. Clear advantage to white, but it's not that easy. I don't know what to, to do there. I'm down to a minute. E6 followed by an HE5 is crushing now. Thanks for giving away that. But try not to, like, try not to suggest concrete moves. All right. I mean, once the variation is impossible, it's fine, but not like right when we're, we're thinking it. I know you waited till after my move, but obviously E6 is strong, but it's very, very difficult to choose between the different moves there. E6 is kind of committal. He's basically playing Hyper Bullet. So he's in line in a queue somewhere, waiting for his COVID vaccination. I don't know what he's doing. It's not clear. All right. Now, when I say white strategically and winning, I mean, I meant it, but that doesn't mean I have the capability of beating him like a computer. E takes D was a horrible move by black. Just saying, theoretically. His position is objectively defensible. My problem is that he's rushing me. He never uses any of his time. You know, and, and the opponent doesn't use any of his time. It means that I have, I never can think on his time. So I'm like constantly rushed. So I can't actually take the time to calculate the best move. That's a serious problem. Plus it's Monday morning, which is another problem. Monday morning is like my worst. Luckily I had a I had a meeting already this morning, so I think he's a sandbagger, by the way. He did make his rating 2002, just to spite me. But last week I said, I don't know, he's, he's good. He's too good for 2002. No? He's like 2002 going on 2202, honestly. Imagine if he took his time, how good he was be, he would be. Like, seriously. You don't think it would be good if he took his time? Wow, look at that. What an amazing move, bishop c8. Having all kinds of weird hallucinations. 
But the bottom line is that I'm going to end up losing on time soon. Because he's basically the fastest player I've ever played. Even though he's 1897 in bullet. It's kind of crazy. Dejan, De Deron, I keep wanting to say Dejan. HG5 is begging to be played. Keep saying that. Keep saying that. G5 is begging to be played. You don't. You don't joke around. <laughs> Not joking. You like the direct moves. Of course he gets in losing positions. He's playing instantaneous moves without thinking. Well, actually, he does some thinking, but... Not enough. God. That's a normal game, like that's normal. He's like fearsomely dangerous tactically. I I'd like to see how he would do against the other 19, 1900 players in the hourly 3-0 arena. I mean, Apparently I was totally winning until I blew it. But right now, it's made in six. So I'm looking at bishop g8. I mean bishop g7, but I didn't see a mate. I have like bishop, oh I have bishop d5 or something. I failed to see this. My pieces are well coordinated. Bishop d5 looks really brutal. What's he going to do there? He's trying to he's trying to mate me on each one. The queen move by him is a blunder. Uh-huh. Well, he's playing for mate in one. What do you want him to do? Live and die by the cheapo. So somehow I managed to be better. My v4 was a mistake. 
I thought that was a positional. Positionally key idea. Anyway, he couldn't bear to play the correct move, which was C takes D here. The computer gives me a massive advantage, though. He has a bad Slav, basically. Demian Lemos. One of Astrobate's good buddies. So Cupine is a subscriber. Viking Beer, first on the list, subscriber. Standard Monday morning game. Viking Beer, not quite the tactical style. He's not quite the tactical style of Sumahair. Yeah, like all of our people, it was just all peace play. Like everybody's pieces are trying to checkmate the other body. Lamos. They tried to get me to, to make videos for, for their site at one point. So they got bought out by Magnus. Magnus Corp, right? They probably got a nice little payday for their scam website. They're kind of scammy. I mean, I shouldn't call them, they're not like complete scam, but they're, they're pretty scammy, the eye chess. I think they've sold a lot of videos without me seeing a penny from that. That doesn't seem right. They're like re reselling the chess lecture videos. I haven't got paid anything for those videos, man. That doesn't seem right. Something's not right around here. So Viking Beer, I should try to punish this. I'm not playing actively enough. I'm letting Viking Beer get away with murder. I think already he's good. I should have played more aggressively. Now he's like equalized. Any thoughts? Dude, anybody would be tougher. No, I don't know, man. Of course Ali Reza would be tougher. But I mean, I said this before, and I'm going to say it for the hundredth time. A single candidate's tournament to determine the world championship candidate is a dumb idea, you know? Back in the day, they used to have candidates tournaments uh, matches right if you want to have a world championship where the format is a match it would make more sense to have matches be the determinant for you know who the who the world championship candidate is it's a better way to determine who the second best player in the world is who deserves to challenge every time they have a candidates tournament some random player wins it seems like but if a series of tournaments or matches were used, I think you'd have a better chance. Caruana was, was legit last time, like second best player in the world, maybe. So in that case, it actually... No, I mean, honestly, even Ding Ren, who had a bad candidates tournament, Caruana, the Pamniachi's what, like fifth in the world? Not ideal. They should have more frequent world championship every year or something. A more reliable way of determining the challenger for the world championship. I understand that like a match system like in the old days seems kind of boring, I guess. But honestly, the Pomniachi is just kind of a randomly one one tournament, you know. The one tournament is not reliable way of determining the challenger. Sorry. They should have like the the way they have the Grand Chess Tour, like like a series of ten tournaments or something, and then who won the most out of the ten tournaments could be the world championship challenger, you know? That would be a lot more legit way of determining who really like the most deserved challenger for the world championship is. You can't have one tournament. Okay, well, Napomniachi was lucky this week. Next week, it'll be like Vacher Le Grave or something. You know, and the week after that, it'll be Aronian 
I mean, it'll just be a different player every time. But it doesn't mean anything, you know, it doesn't mean he's the second best player in the world. If anything, do it by rating, maybe, I don't know, but... Napomniachi wasn't... But the other thing is, in Napomniachi, I don't understand who his... Who the hell was, like, helping this guy, like, prepare his openings for his match with Magnus? Like, he's got to play dynamically, and he's playing the Petrov. It's not like he's playing, like, goddamn Kasparov or something, you know? Magnus isn't even that sharp in the openings. Why are you playing the Petrov? Really? Why is he playing the Petrov? I don't understand, you know? You're playing against, like, a psycho attacker. You can play the Petrov, right? You might even beat them. You know, you're playing a match against Alexei Shirov. Then the Petrov's a good choice. But against Carlsen, do you think it's a good idea to play the Petrov? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard of. Like, yeah, maybe for one game where you need to draw. Maybe the Petrov's a great idea if you're ahead by a point and, and you need to draw the last game or something. But straight up to play the Petrov the whole match? I mean, seriously. That's dumb. Why, why not play something more dynamic, like the Sicilian? Reverse psychology. Yeah, I mean, you can use reverse psychology for, like, one game or something, but, you know, you're not going to play the Petrov every single game, the whole match. Okay. Good idea. Um, and and the, the disgusting anti-martial. You, you might as well play the Scotch, man. I mean, the Scotch would at least be, be a little sharper. Dude, anything. Come up with something creative, you know. Dubob would be a better challenger than Pomniachi, probably. At least he would have chosen some good openings. You gotta consider the fact that the Pomniachi's never had to play a serious, real, like, match, you know? Who, who is this? Yeah, Magnus has, has done this now, like, five times. He's, he's almost like an experienced match player now. Porcupine? His name, Weirdly. As Fabiano said, he's playing like a 2300. Oh, brother. Dude, whatever. That's inane. And I think you're taking it out of context. Dude, what do you mean he's playing like a 2300? It's ridiculous. It's already been like proven that the, the match is extremely accurate. Other than like one blunder last game. They're gonna, they're gonna trash the guy no matter what he does. Caruana is there, Mr. Bitter, who, who would like to have been the challenger. You think he's gonna say something nice? His opening choices are bad. He's not playing like a 2300. Give me a break. That's just idiotic to say that. Yeah, like, okay, the last game was the one where he played, he played the one game like a 2300, but what do you, what do you want? You know, the rest of the games he played on high level. There was lots of games where World Championships challengers played like 1800s probably. It's ridiculous to criticize him. He played pretty well overall. He has bad choice of openings, and he's not as good a player as Magnus. What the heck did you expect? You know, you expected Joe Biden to be a great president? No. You expected Napomniachi to make maybe a competitive match out of it, and he sort of did, but not really. No. I'm not surprised. Well, the last game was, was a lemon, you know, I mean, and the other game he lost was a drawn position where 
the the time played a role. I mean, this is what modern chess is. Unfortunately, we can't have adjournments anymore. I don't even think Magnus really, you know, deservedly won the other game. It really should have been a draw. But whatever. I mean, he won, he won. But I mean, I don't like the chess has become where end games no longer can be played well because neither side has enough time to finish the game. Unfortunately, this is going to be the, the standard almost forever now. Since we can't have adjournments, games have to be decided, so we'll just like randomly win drawn positions. And Magnus is the master of that, you know. But he didn't really beat him, he just sort of waited from the blunder and time pressure. I mean, whatever. It was 0, 0 0.00 for like 100 moves, and Magnus won. Well, for me, that's not a really impressive game, you know. Sorry. I have high standards. The last game was, was bad. He resigned. Mysterious resignations. Okay, d5 is not protected. So it looked like you had queen c5 here. He played one bad game. I mean, the Pagliacci's... I don't know, man. Openings, for me, are the main thing. Don't like his opening choices. The Harmless, anti Marshall, and the Petrov. Dude, of course you can trick him in the opening. Chess fan. Magnus can be beaten in the opening. But he has a lot of help. And you can definitely beat him in the middle game. Probably not in the end game. Dude, there's tons of examples of Magnus losing games. Like, it can be done. He's certainly not perfect in openings and middle games. I mean, whatever. Oof. He couldn't beat Caruana in a match. What do you want? You know, why is he so great? I can understand Caruana being kind of bitter. You know, he couldn't actually beat him and had to beat him in rapid chess. And now the Pamiachi is up there playing like a 2300. Well, he did in one game. I can understand Caruana being bitter. I mean, he was a legitimate challenger and the Pamiachi's not. That's kind of where where it's at, it seems like. I'm just glad we're not going to see any more of the Pomniachi op-eds in like the New York Times or something. At least we can get a break from that. That was enough to make me hate him. Yeah, I agree. I know he... he Caruana wouldn't say he's playing like a 2300 every game. Of course... He meant it specifically about the last game, which is fair. But I mean, when you're 2800, you know, every every five or six games, you know, you play one game where it's like 2300. That's that's how it works. You don't play every game like you're 2800. English opening would be a better choice. Yeah, anything. Anything but the anti martial Well, or try the anti martial once, but why do you keep playing it like for four games in a row, you know? You clearly got nothing every time you played it, and it's nothing at all, you know? Nothing's okay for Carlsen. It's okay to get nothing when you're Carlsen, because you have this, you know, amazing endgame skill where you can, like, beat... 2700s in 0, 0.00 positions on a regular basis and instinct and so Napomniachtchi thinks he can play 0, 0.00 openings and get no advantage and beat Carlson? No. You gotta play something interesting. He's gotta play something more interesting. That anti martial is gross. Anything, yeah, you could play c3 on the first move and have a better chance than going into established anti martial theory. You believe Magnus has bribed Nepo's team? I mean, what is Nepo's team, by the way? Whose brilliant idea was it to play the Petrov? I'd like to know that. He'd be better off playing the French Winnower, probably. 
I mean, seriously. You're putting Magus in exactly the kind of boring position he likes. Obviously, nobody needs to bribe Nepo to lose. <laughs> he can do that on his own. It sounded like he was making the implication about the team. They bribed him to, like, encourage him to play bad openings or something. Maybe. Somebody bribed him to play the Petrov. They must have bribed his 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 preparation people to, to encourage him to play the Petrov. I mean, I play the Petrov, and it sucks, you know, I can tell you, but... It's good, you know, when you're like trying to uh, encourage a, a psycho aggressive player to attack you, maybe with black. But Magnus isn't going to do that, you know. He, you can't, you can't be like a bullfighter against Magnus. He won't take unnecessary risks and try to go Alexei Shirov on you. Yeah, B five was like a. Dude, but you imagine how upset Nippo was by losing that other game? It broke his... That, that drawn ending that he lost broke his spirit. I mean, seriously. How upsetting is that to play 100 moves where the engine is like 0, 0.0 and then you blunder and lose? You imagine how much, how, how much that devastates your self-confidence? Is anybody thinking about this? How devastated Napaniachi must have been in terms of self-confidence? After losing that, that's that's it, man. That's it. That's the match right there. Blundering in a draw position after 100 moves of 0, 0.00. You sit there and you're like, well, if I can't draw that, then I might as well just hang it up. And that's exactly. It's devastating. There's, you know, you've got to be a really tough player to come back from that. That was an easily drawn position. I could probably have drawn it on a normal day. You know, I would I would have held that ending way more often than I would lose it. Like seriously. And and normally Napaniachi wouldn't lose it. There was a lot of choices. He had a lot of choices. Yeah, it comes down to time. You know, Magnus is, is the best ever at this. Manipulating the 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 new modern, you know, time limit in drawn positions. I thought that after a game off, you know, a rest day, maybe Napomniachi would be able to recover. But B5 says otherwise. B5 is the move of a man whose spirit was broken by that previous, that previous loss, I think. I think they're, they're, they're related. You know, if it was normal time, he might have drawn, might have drawn it. Are you kidding me? Of course he would have drawn it. 90 out of 100 times he would have drawn with normal time. That's the problem with chess now. We can't have adjournments because of computers. So we have to make the end games. End games are destroyed now. There's no more end games. M games have been sacrificed to the computer gods. No, I mean, if, if Napomniachi was stronger psychologically, maybe he could have come back from that, that horrible losing a drawn position. But I personally would be pretty devastated. Like, if you can't save a drawn position, you know, you're certainly not going to save, like, where you're worse or something like that. Anyway, on to the next World Championship. If there is there an online bet for chess, of course, great Lazarus. Chess is very vulnerable to being manipulated by betting. Too late to make any money. Yeah, maybe. I don't know.
It's like very easy to manipulate matches. You can fix matches very easily. Much more easily than in like football. I mean, imagine fixing matches in football, how complicated that is. You got a team sport where sometimes in order to fix a match, you'd have to have like multiple people involved. I mean, like fix fixing a chess match is easy. You just have to like conspire with one person. I was always suspicious that Kasparov lost against Deep Blue, you know, purposely. I mean, I can't prove that. I have a suspicion that it could be true, but, but I mean, seriously, chess, chess will have this issue. You know, it's, it's easy to boxing. It's like boxing. You just, you have, have to like have one person in on it. It's not like a team sport. I mean, ask yourself this question, have chess games ever been fixed? Of course they have, for a lot less reason. People making title norms and stuff. Betting is, is a tricky thing. But now what happens when you have a match that's basically over? Like what's to prevent, I don't know, Carlson and, and the Pamiachi from, you know, integrity would prevent them from fixing games and stuff, but betting complicates sports a lot. Is Magnus sponsored by some betting site or something? By the way? Black's playing really well. I think a lot of people play the IQP positions badly. Unibet. Well, I don't know what the solution to that is, but I'm I'm assuming that the the match isn't fixed or anything like that. What happens when it's basically over and he's plus two with like five games left? Honestly, from the betting perspective, the match would be a lot more interesting if it was to go to rapid. It would be in their interest to, to have it be more exciting for the betting sites. Shift D8 is a great move. I mean, I think the Caruana match was exciting going to Rapid. Soulless animated corpse. Nice. He was already soulless. Now he's animated. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was never a fan of Pamiachi, so whatever. I don't care. I'm not a Magnus fan either, but he is the best practical player of all time. I mean, I would never take that away from him. I personally don't like his style, but it's hard to argue that he's the best player in the world. That he's not the best player in the world. Well, I mean, you could say, <laughs> Asparov, are you serious? The Pomni over pressing? Overpressing. Well, if B5 was overpressing, but I mean, basically he played like a grandma, like pretty much the whole match. If anything, I would say he's like too, 
too unwilling to take any risk whatsoever. Oh, in the first game? No, but I mean, just the whole style of play. He handled the match totally badly. I mean, it's easy to say in retrospect, but... Boring openings, no dynamism, no risks from the Pamiachi. How would he? How did he plan on beating Magnus? Magnus overpressing. Maybe. But he expected Magnus to overpress, but that's kind of not something you can really count on. I mean, I have noticed Magnus has, and I've made this comment before, he has a, have a tendency to overpress against his young rivals. Like, I've seen him lose a number of games against people like Dubov, Dingli Ren, Caruana. Against his rivals, he has sometimes seen to show a tendency to push a little, to be a little too pushy. But I don't know. You know, he did start out the match. I kind of like the way that the match started out. Like, it looked like maybe Magnus was really pushing a little too hard, taking risks in the beginning. Could have backfired. No, had Magnus like blundered in game two and lost or something, obviously it would be a, a completely different situation. Great Lazarus subscriber, I'm sorry, I should have taken your challenge next. Um We'll play next. Great Lazarus. I don't know if Signet is here. Six games left? Is there six games left? Oh. I was thinking there was five. No. Next World Championship should be in two years, right? It's not over yet. But I think that Napomniachi was devastated. How can you explain that the B5 move? That slashing out... That's something a 2300 would do, seriously. I mean, Caruana is right about that. Who's lost patience? B5 is the is the is the move of a player who's lost patience. So what happens here? We like transpose to a... I had the funniest thing happen the other day. There was a pawn cube on like C4, C5, D5, and D4. Has anybody ever seen that? I don't think I literally had ever seen that. Like I, I, I said, this is a classic pawn cube with the pawns on G6, G7, F6, and F7. That's the most common pawn cube. But I literally saw this game where black had pawns on, on c4, d4, d5, and c5. I, I don't think I ever had that pawn cube before. It's pretty funny. It feels impossible that he did not know he was using a pawn after b5. B5 is like the kind of move that you like, you're not, you should have sat on your hands, you make it too impatiently. Like he would have seen it was a blunder if he had just thought for like one more minute, but he played too quickly or something. It's an impulsive move that you play like in Blitz. It, it seems out of character with the rest of the game. What I like about the pawn cube is that you have two levels, like the first floor and the second floor. And you can like advance the first floor and still have the second floor in case you need some protection. You wonder how in a span of one or two years I raise a game like 150? Dude, he left Iran. 
Do you think that might help? I mean, I don't know. Like, he's unrestricted where he can play now. The other Iranian players are are restricted by their, by their you know, travel. He, he, you know, I don't know. I mean, being unrestricted and and like where he can go and whatever he can play in is obviously going to help Perusha. Imagine the Chinese players if they if they could just play wherever they wanted. Like think about like Ding the Red. He's he's restricted by the Chinese government. I was thinking about this the other day. Here in Hungary for like a span of 15 years between like 19 95 and or let's say well 10 years anyway 10 to 15 years between like 1998 and 2013 there were tons of chinese players who were coming to play in first saturday now zero right zero they don't play anymore here in hungary i mean the government is restricting everything how how are these Chinese players gonna gonna improve like the like they were before? If the Chinese top players were unrestricted in their travel and playing in tournaments and stuff, they could probably have several Ferrugias. But it looks like they implemented some kind of crackdown on, on how much they can play abroad and stuff like that. We, we were having tons of players from China here. I mean, I played a few of them. The last time I saw a play from China here in Hungary was like 2000, 2017 maybe. So anyway, my point was that the Ferruja benefited by, by changing his citizenship to France. Now he's, he's unlimited basically how much he can play and stuff. That can explain not only his age, but his faster pace of improvement. What is the video, Miras? I don't like just like clicking on random, random stuff. The old habit of Nepo, like moving quickly. He blunders playing it on. You know, it's interesting. He's a young I mean, he started at a very young age, right? I mean, he was a junior, a junior prodigy. Um, that's usually a problem for people who started when they're older. Some players have more of a tendency to make big blunders than others. I think Shankland had something of a problem with that. because he's a late starter. Interesting game by White. I really need to figure out how to play the white side of the EF Karo Khan. The pawn cube, it's stretched. It's been stretched a little bit. It looks like the, the Dutch or something. Stretched my pawn cube. It's like when you take the Rubik's cube and pull out one of the pieces.
It's kind of hard not to take that knight on e5. I think I'm in trouble here. I was really worried about pawn takes pawn in that position. Oops. Wow. Looks like I'm losing. Pawn cube has has mysteriously disappeared. It was a pawn crane, now it's just non existent. The pawn cube is no longer with us. Very very poor poor result for me. I can't really afford to trade queens here. I'm totally dead. I don't even know what happened. I miscalculated with with uh, with ninety four. It looks like after F three by white. No, it was queen d7 that was the problem. I forgot my knight was getting trapped. I could have played like g5 right away. I'm not sure that solves all my problems, but it's certainly better than what happened. I resign. Two blunders. Yeah, I was apparently okay. Bishop takes e5 was like a horrible move according to the engine. I mean, I don't imagine how I'm going to get rid of that knight, but I guess I could play knight d7. No, I was facing this threat as well. So I could have played knight e4. Yeah, I should have played knight e4. I had a feeling about this wasn't good, but I didn't think it was that bad. Problem is that my knight has nowhere to go. He should play bishop e3, it looks like. 
This is even stronger, not giving me g5. His bishop's stronger than my knight, but he didn't see that he could sack this. Here, f3, or just bishop c5. Sheba Spiller, the only one interested in our master class on London and Stafford. We haven't had a lot of we haven't had a lot of interest. Can't imagine why. Um, yeah, that wasn't a good game. Cairo Khan goes down in flames again. All right, great Lazarus. Hey, it's Miro. Pawn corpse. Welcome, Sheba Spieler. Did you play chess this weekend? When will you play blind? blind when you play blindfold games? The pieces. Look, what do the pieces look like? They're not that crisp. <laughs> I never thought about it that way. But it's it's interesting when you play blindfold chess. Do the pieces look like 2D or 3D? Hmm. No, to be honest with you, I never thought about it. I just, like, don't play much blindfold. But when I did... I don't know how to describe it. It's not even clear if they're 2D or 3D. That's funny. I don't know if I can even tell, are they 2D or 3D? Does that make sense? Like, I'm not even sure. I wanted to say 2D. I think they must be 2D for me, because I'm not that good at blindfold chess. Ah, oh, you got me. Shiver's Pillar and I should have a contest to see who has the most consecutive draws in the Hungarian Team Championship. But he's now pulling ahead due to the fact that we had a buy round this week. Mm-hmm. You're leading. You're leading by one by one draw. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, my team looks like it's in trouble. I wasn't sure at first, but now there are two teams ahead of us in game points. But let me understand this right. Like, in my division, Sheber Spieler, there's the Nachkanisha second team, right? So they can't, they're not allowed to have, you get another due to sense to get St. Miklos, yeah. They're not allowed to have two teams in the first division, right? A team like Notch Kanisha. You can't have two two teams in in Hungarian first division. Isn't that right? How it works? Okay, not Notch Kanisha. What is it? Um Notch Kanisha is in your division. That's right. Um But we're in trouble with, with it looks like Nirakaza. They've got a lot of good results. Nirakaza's in second place. We've got to play them, so this is going to be a very important match on my birthday. December the 19th. That'll be my next game. But it looks like we, we could be in trouble against them. They have a number of Romanian players who seem pretty strong. Not just Romanian, there's a couple of Romanian, a couple of Ukrainian players who... These, these guys seem to be doing very well every round, so... We might be in trouble. Our team isn't that deep. We also have this like weird 
situation where some Indian guy is is on our team. He played the first round and lost against Fogarashi. Yeah, Co uh, Kobanya. Kobanya is in first. I meant Kobanya. Yeah. Not 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 Kanisha. I don't know why that was in my mind, but no, the Pensugor is struggling in first division. Yeah, they don't seem that that strong. Um, but Kobanya has second team leading our division. But if one team goes up, we have to finish ahead of Nirakaza. But anyway, like there's some kid who they put on board one of my team. He he's like playing for Singapore, but he he's actually I think Indian. But anyway, he's he's not that strong. He lost against Fogarashi in the first round. I was kind of like actually it was it was a little bit like <laughs> It was a little similar to the Pomni the um, discussing Petrov, and and lost. But I heard a rumor like he might play against Nirakaza, which would be. I don't know if it's good or bad. Maybe we just like sacrifice board one and. And then we have a chance on the rest of the boards. We'll probably lose board one against them. But it's like their bottom boards seem really strong. Yeah, he pushes the team up. Then I would play like Varga Petty or something and... Great Lazar, a solid D4 player. So anyway, we'll see. But I thought we had a good chance, but I'm starting to think that every every match they seem to outscore us by like one point. Our team's not bad, but it, it just doesn't seem quite strong enough to win the division. But again, like maybe we can finish second and and still get to the first division if Kobanya doesn't count. Yeah, I don't know what to do here. All right. I'm going for the draw record. Nine draws. Yeah, my title, my stream title is just a meme. Just to make fun of. Oh my god. That's it. Good thing I saw that move. Are you serious? I just lose a piece? What? He's the standard twenty one forty eight. 
I've lost the last three and a half out of four against him. I just lose a piece here to bishop b5. Wow. That's great. Well, that's that's good. Of course. Four and a half out of his last five. What was that? What does that mean? That was you playing like God again. You might as well play like Carlson. You play better than the Pomniachi. What does that mean? What was that? Like who's sitting there expecting bishop b5? Oh, I saw bishop b5. That's that's a standard move. All your pieces are pointing at the king side. That's a nice thing to say. After you, you know, I blunder a piece. What was that? Oh, okay. <laughs> what does that mean? It means I blundered a piece. Who's expecting bishop b5 in this position? I've been I've been expecting bishop b5 all along. I mean, it's the first move I think of in this kind of position. Because your pieces are like aimed at my king side completely. I never looked at bishop b5 in my life. Queen b8 was a good move. This is actually a GM game of this position. It's just horrifying blunder. The plan was to play bishop d6 on the next move. The point is I play queen e8 and then bishop d6 on the next move. I see that you have rook c7, but I'm not a computer, you know. Unfortunately, I don't have any access to a computer, so. Without access to the computer, I make blunders, unlike some people. What can I do? All right, Mikhail, Mikhail Tal. Yeah, well, we can't be perfect like you. I, I can't guarantee I never blunder. I saw rook c7, of course. What do you think? I didn't see rook c7. I saw rook c7, but I don't see bishop bishop b5. I mean, the plan was, was rook c7, rook d8, followed by bishop d6, and I'm fine. But if I don't see bishop b5, you know, queen b8 sucks. I mean, it's a less active square for the queen. I don't want to put my queen on b8 when I could put it on a8. You know, queen b8 doesn't do anything. It's It's totally inactive there. I, I want to put my queen on a8, ties your knight down, and attacks g2. But again, you know, if I if I, if I was a computer, I would see it. I, I make mistakes, you know. Obviously, I'm very weak tactically, especially on Monday morning. I don't like this move. It seems wrong to open the position for the side of the two bishops. I would never play queen b8. Like seriously, that's a computer move. It's not a good it's not a natural square for the queen in that type of position. It never even entered my mind. You know, it, normal under normal circumstances, it wouldn't be a move I would play, like ever. Maybe in like a queen's gamut accepted or something, but but not in a nimzo queen's Indian type of structure. When do you ever play queen b8 in the, in the nimzo or queen's Indian? That's a very strange move.
that was the number one move of the computer, but it never even occurred to me. Like, I can only I can only work with my my patterns I've played with before. In the Queen's Gambit accepted, I would play that move. It's a different structure. I mean, there are like cheapos with Queen B8 and Knight G4, like in the in the Siberian trap. <laughs> but I mean, having played B6, we would rather play Queen A8. Check him out with Rook F4. This is a very speaking of natural squares for the pieces. Well, it's it's a wonderful one move blunder by me. Normally, I see the blunder right before I after I make the move. In this case, I had no clue. I was lost until until you played it, which also says something interesting. Hmm. Yeah, great Lazarus is getting stronger. Great Lazarus had that blitz tournament where he had a twenty six hundred performance. Crushed all of us. I don't know if Sheever Spieler was in that one. Or did you lose one game to Sheever Spieler or something? You seem very inconsistent. Right here. This looks tough to defend. But he crushed you too. He had like a 20, 2650 blitz performance. Seven and a half out of nine, I think. This was a month or so ago. It's amazing because he's only 2150 on blitz. I guess he had his coffee that day. I have to be in really good form. I haven't had a good form in a while. I was thinking that was um, Husky last week, but it wasn't Husky. It was Lazarus, who had the seven and a half out of nine in a very strong tournament too. That was like the strongest one ever. That's why it was particularly notable the last, you you missed some strong tournaments too. The last week or two, not quite as strong as that one, but okay. Mikhail Tal just lost a piece here. Why? I guess he could he could play knight e two, but I mean clearly rook f four was maniacal. You just don't play rook f four. I mean maybe king h one. Up until that, it seems okay. But as I said earlier, I don't think, I don't think I like d4 for white. I've had a lot of games in this position, and you know the best setup is like d3, and then playing for f5. More natural. the more natural Grand Prix attack. Million games with, with Mule Skinner and actually Zenchess, who hasn't been around in a long time. I hope Zenchess is okay. I haven't seen him in ages. Mule Skinner. I probably have more, more games in this Grand Prix attack than anything else in the last couple of years streaming. But I alternate the variation I play. 
sometimes I play a6 and sometimes I play d5. We got another challenge from another player who's given me a hard time lately. Miro crushed me last time. Resign. Oh, it's a problem. Yeah, I have queen b1 check. Actually... No, actually this isn't... I mean, it's lost, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the rook takes g2 is the best move. Because actually he plays queen takes g2. Yeah, probably my best is like rook takes g2, queen g2, and then take on f5. And then I'm just up like four pawns in a rook ending. Yeah. Four pawns up and a rook inning should suffice. <laughs> Probably we're winning here. Yeah. But I mean, just to show you guys, this opening, you know, there's only three examples where I played D4. Random guy, random guy, random guy. In all cases, white was the lower rated player and lost. But I don't think that d4 is the right idea. You're playing a closed Sicilian. I'm going for the I'm going for the bishop on the long diagonal, and d3 keeps it kind of shut down, you know? If you can keep my white square bishop shut down, you can attack me in the center or on the king's side. I think that d4 is clearly the wrong idea. I'm trying to make my bishops great again. I mean, that's my advantage in that position. Hey, Smiro. We gotta try to get him out of book. Last time. No, I, I lost really. I played badly and he kicked my butt in a, in a Latvian. Not Latvian, Schliemann. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna give him that. He's probably prepared for the Schleeman now. He wasn't prepared, and he still beat me. After not knowing what he was doing on the white side of the Schleeman, that was the last game. Thanks, Mikhail Tal. Um, a little too over the top with Rook F4. I played a game against you. Oh man, I, I, you know, this is bad because I forgot that I played the exact same thing against you two weeks ago when I, I should have lost another game. I played bishop g4 against him, but this is a bad move. You've got to play g6 here. It's a Pierce classical. I've actually, like, I lost against Vadim Milov with white. And I have a draw against Shredayevich, where I didn't get anything. My score with the white pieces is like one half out of two in this variation. Yeah, well, don't don't worry, Great Lazarus. Shiver Spieler is tougher. He's he's a specialist. He's also a specialist in this kind of... I think he's more of a specialist in this time control. I mean, Sheba Spieler is probably stronger in Blitz than me. I, I will admit it. But he's tough on everybody, not just you. Um, he's very systematic. So d5 is crazy. You, I mean, g4 is crazy. Excuse me. I meant to say g4. Wow. I crazy, dude. I'm just going to consider knight d4 for a moment.
I guess it's on sound. Knight e4, knight e4, pawn d4, bishop d4. Knight e4, bishop g7, king g7. Knight e4, rook e8. Yeah. I don't think I can do that. It's not the King's Indian, right? But it it's a psycho aggressive system for white. He's playing with, with Castle's Queen side. I've never faced this yet. I mean he's probably just making this up, but it actually makes some sense. The engine is probably looking at like D five here. Could sack a piece like sometimes in the Roy Lopez for the center. Here I could possibly defend, try to defend with ninety eight. That's insanely passive. It's basically like a weird dragon. It's a dragon, king's Indian. Knight e8, bishop c5, for example. I'm not going to do that. It's, it's really too passive. What's a pawn, right, among friends? Yeah, I can't believe you remember you're older than me. It's good to know there's someone on the stream older than me. I think the 72 match was happening while I was coming into existence. All right. A few of us remember what a broadcast over the phone line I thought you were going to say radio. I remember radio. Does anybody else remember radio? What's radio? Queen a5, king b1. Knight e4, knight e4, queen d2. Well, my bishop takes e5. I want more. I wanted to play rook b8, but I thought he might actually take on a7. I 
Hey, it's Mirror Quast. Quast. Quast 2200. No, man, I mean, if you compare the match games of, like, Fisher Spassky to... Not the second match. I'm sorry, but if you compare the match games of Fisher Spassky 1 and really any of the Karpov Kasparov matches, it just... They were way, way, way more interesting than... I'm sorry, you know? Okay, it was different. There were adjournments. That made it better. I just don't think this, this World Championship is interesting at all. But, I mean, I also think that... Nakamiyachi wasn't the best challenger. But neither was Karyakin. Karawana would, would be good. Ding Liren would be good. Feruja would be good. Even Aronyan would be good. Even Mamajarov. But Mamajarov hasn't been in good form lately. Hopefully the next World Championship will be good. So I was going to cop out when they take C4. This is sort of sad, though. There's probably something more dynamic, but I have only 39 seconds left. So I'm just too short of time to try to find something... Something... Like a sacrificial line, rook b8. Anything, bishop e6, he's threatening knight tc5. I, I think black had a good game. And I'm, I'm sure this is probably not my best. But at least it's like getting back my sacrificed pawn and my position is probably okay. Might be okay. My position might be okay. Let's just say that. I can say that. My position might be okay. Wonder why he's thinking so long. Knight takes e4, queen d2. Something takes d2, bishop takes e5. I think Carlson something that people underestimate about Magnus or don't don't really think about it. You know, he probably has the best time management skills of anyone in the world. Like seriously. I better not be lost here. I almost like played a sharp move there. Damn, dude. God. How is he 2000? He's so strong. Nice game. Now he blundered. He missed Bishop takes a7. He's killing me here. Now he's like only clearly better. Dude, you're like brutal.
I was close. I think I was close to losing there. If his play was a little more accurate. Now it's a draw. If he had played a4, I'm not sure. If he takes on a6, also probably close to winning. This is a great game by White. It's hard to believe I have such a dominant score against you. You played really well lately. Um, Gray Lazarus. Almost beat a 2650. So, wow. This, I walked right into this. You're the first person who's tried to play this way against me. There's literally no games in the database with G4. This is a very interesting idea. Man. So the computer thinks it was a draw in the ending, but only after B4. I actually have less mistakes than you, but you're like crushing me. That's messed up. Like how do I have less mistakes than him? And he was like crushing me the whole game. And I have 28 cent upon loss and weight 30. I was just like lost. You're lost, but you didn't really do anything wrong. Queen a5 started the trouble, of course. I mean, damn. Can I play knight d4 here? I, I mean, I always will sacrifice a pawn if I can for the initiative. It's not clear if black has enough. Rook e8 first. F3. It's a King's Indian idea. This is not convincing. If I can't sacrifice a pawn, you know, there's also the possibility of not castling. Novelty. G4 novelty. Very dangerous concept. Okay, queen d2, you could play it like in the next move or so. But it's funny that, that this is the best move according to the computer. Now, this does transpose g4. There's three games where this happened. Basically, the same idea in a different order of moves. Wait still has a strong attack. Vorakowska. It's the best move according to the engine in this position, g4. Then it changed its mind, but it's up there. Castle's queen side. So if d5... This is also totally unplayable. The guy played that in 20, 2000. Yeah, good luck with that against Olav. Olav. Olav the snowman would not... Man, I don't know what I did wrong. So we transposed. And now c6. We're following a game here. What else am I supposed to play? So c6. This is a novelty, best move according to the computer. No, it's not a novelty. We're following this game. I don't know who this is. I guess the wife of Samo Luvo, uh, the Finnish, the Finnish GM. D takes C6, B takes C6. And now, of course, your move is stronger than this, this ridiculous Rook D1. What a ridiculous move, right? Castle's queenside, clearly the right move. I played the best move. Now you took the pawn. And now I, I, I play queen a5, but it's not best. I thought about this. I was actually afraid of bishop takes a7. 
I looked at this, but I didn't have enough time to, to come to a conclusion. So as usual, queen a5 is always bad. Bishop e6. Bishop e6 is better. If the computer says I had two minutes, but I think by the time I made a move, I was down to like a minute or less here. I thought a while on this, I think. Yeah. I mean, black may or may not have enough compensation, objectively. Yeah, I didn't think this was as bad as it was. The problem is this move. I'm basically paralyzed. Rook e8, rook e1. Bishop f6, I'm like one move away from instant death. It's a terrible situation. It's like the perfect position for white. Rohan Tennis. And Nekinen. These 2000 players are murderous. But that's a dangerous variation you played. You know, maybe black should delay castling. Maybe black should not play the. I wish I had played that way against Vadim Milov with white, honestly. Instead, I did some kind of lame bishop e2, which is just nothing. Classic closed Sicilian. This seems wrong. It's a King's Indian attack move, but not appropriate in a closed Sicilian, really. He really wants the rook behind the f-pawn here. You know, it's different if we just played like c3 and he has the option to play for d4. Now the rook is misplaced. Anyway, thanks for the game, Miro. Another solid game by you. Yeah, I don't have good results with that. Oh, he just lost a piece. Blunder. I haven't had very good results with the with the Nimzovich defense. This sort of opening, that's second rate, but you play it for surprise value. If people start playing it right, <laughs> it ceases to have a point, you know, to play it. That's why I quit playing the Scandinavian with knight f6. The point of playing such openings is, is the practical reasoning that, that people don't play the, the white side properly. Um, but again, if I start running into you playing really well there, the last couple times I played the, the opening were disasters. The last two over the board games, not total disasters, but semi disasters. I played, I played the Nimzovich against the a couple of players whose average rating was like 2200 where I really need to try to beat them I'm not playing the Nimzovich defense to try to draw with 2200s and I was worse in both games with virtually zero chance of winning I think it's time to not play that opening if that's what happens when you play against someone 150 points lower or more and you have zero winning chances, but chances to lose. 
I mean, maybe I just played badly, but... It's more than that. Just not a good opening. Um, the Nim's a bitch. Not really a good opening. Guys, I gotta go. This is my last game. It is last game. Already. Uh oh. Alright. My alarm is about to go off. So I don't like this for white. This move order. I lost to Grandmaster Oliver Mihawk once playing this with white. You have the unpleasant choice between knight takes, which is nothing, and pawn takes pawn, which goes into a, a Tarash reversed. Which is also nothing, or maybe worse than nothing. <laughs> you could have nothing or worse than nothing. Those are your two options. Which do you pick? A safe nothing or slightly more dy dynamic... Ah, knight b1. Well, that's different. That's different. I like that. You gotta give knight b1 some credit for creativity. Of course, we didn't mention queen takes d4. I guess that's theoretically playable. Losing a big tempo with knight c6. Knight, knight, knight b1... Um, Playing literally a tempo down. Tarash. It's the Brooklyn variation of the reverse Tarash. Now he's back again. So he's like black down a... Is he black here or is he black down a tempo? He sees... No, I think he's literally like black. He's literally playing black. Knight on the rim is dim. Oh. But not so dim anymore. Non existent. Funny, I had. I think I had the exact same position somehow by transposition recently. Hard to understand how that's possible. No one obviously would play knight b1. They're sniffing glue. Um, glue. Glue review. Oh, this, this square I'm trying to highlight. Because I didn't lose, you know, one game already today. Was it okay? It wasn't the direct problem with with Great Lazarus was the C six square. It was more like the C seven square, and then the B five square. But there were still queen side significant queen side weaknesses. Watch out! I might sacrifice my bishop on H three. I'm not sure that this is a great move, but I made a cubby hole for my queen. That was my big idea. You could have played knight g5, trapping my bishop. It's probably better. Okay, admittedly, white's knight is pretty strong, but my bishop is probably as strong or stronger than that knight on e5. Unopposed white square bishop. And now... What's up, Tezik? Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in the next World Championship cycle. But I, I really, I'm not, I'm not pro, pro candidates, tournament, um, system. 
I think FIDE should do away with that current system. That'll never happen, right? Do away with the current system, have something where it's like multiple tournaments determine. You know, if not matches, then it should be multiple tournaments determine the world championship qualifier. For it to matter, like, for the world championship qualification to hinge on one tournament is, is sort of stupid, I think. I really don't think that is a good a good system. One tournament generates a random winner, relatively random winner. So we have a random random world championship. It was fortunate last time. Caruana actually qualified. But at least something positive came out of it, like the Pomniachi Chi. Reminds me of saying, um, Someone else asked, why does everyone mispronounce it? Because it's hard to say. Pamniachichi. You feel like you're stuttering. That's hard to say. Um, ch -ch Chia. It sounds too much like Chia Pet, too. Um, I lost my train of thought. Well, at least he, we won't have to see any more editorials in the New York Times. That's the only good thing I've... Hopefully he'll go back into not being a columnist. Night D7. But honestly, it seemed like poor opening prep by the Napomniachi Club. by end game thanks everyone for joining us we'll be back tomorrow night with a rapid tournament Ponder Rapid Tournament, Tuesday night. Seven rounds, Rapid. Yes, this is resignable. But it's a kid who doesn't really know end games. A lot of people just don't, they don't end game. Why would you though? <laughs> Why would you end game in today's world where end games don't matter because Magnus wins anyway? Make end games matter again. Computers have destroyed the end game world. Since we can't have adjournments anymore, I think. It's almost mate, but not quite. Thank you for the games, guys. I will, um... I will be back tomorrow night. Rapid Ponda Swiss Blitz. Sorry, Rapid Ponda... Swiss. 
with seven rounds tomorrow night at 6.45. I'll set up the tournament today so everyone can join. Stay tuned to the Ponda Club announcements. Bye-bye.